Good evening, and welcome to Adventures in Fly Time, the Google Plus edition. Tonight we are uh, doing some uh, experiments in Google Plus live streaming. We uh, have, uh, when with the partnership of uh, Rick Monday at Stop and Go Radio and his lovely wife Dana, who's not on tonight, uh, they have a radio show that's on Friday nights, and we uh, uh, get together and have chat about topical subjects and, and the like, and usually yell and uh, make you know silly sounds. Uh, but tonight we're going to do the same thing with fly time. So uh, what we wanted to do tonight, uh, say hello, Rick. I did. I said hello. Oh, okay. Hi. <laughs> I didn't know if you had a chance to do that or not. Well, anyway, uh, what we're going to do tonight is uh, some basic stuff. I'm experimenting uh, with the technology that we have at our disposal. I have a small uh, camera. I'll stick my finger in the frame so you can see it. Uh, that's focused on the vice, and then I also have a camera that's focused on my ugly mug. So <clears throat> what I want to do is uh, some experiments with size of the flies and some of the materials that we're doing to see exactly how all the, the, the different uh, parts jive up and if it's actually a doable thing. If people can actually learn from this, I would love to have it be uh, available. What will happen is this Hangout, is getting recorded right now uh, by Google, and uh, shortly after it's over, uh, we'll put up the uh, we'll embed the linkage to get to the the hangout. Is that that's how it works, right? Yep. And uh, but right now we're live, so I, I can basically just tell you that tonight we're going to do some uh, materials handling uh, video, and I'll tell you up front that I'm not going to tie complete flies. I'm just going to show you. Uh, some techniques. And tonight's technique is called uh, posting, parachute posts. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll go through the four different materials that I have at my disposal and show you uh, the different materials, their pluses and minuses, how to use them, and basically how to post up parachutes in every one. So uh, the first one that I'll show you, and I'll start by taking this out. I'm going to put my glasses on, my cheaters. And put the first one in. This is a basically the bones of what would be a cat skill style dry fly. And I would consider this a royal wolf. I used red thread in here so you could see it better, but that's just the grizzly hackle wrapped around it. And as you can see that's a split wing. And uh, that's calf tail that's been split. And wrapped, but the finished fly would have tails and a real bushy uh, dub body, and basically you wouldn't uh, be able to see all that thread underneath. And I would probably use uh, either white or probably a matching thread like a black or uh, uh, some dun colored thread. But anyway, a uh, calf tail starts out as basically you know a calf tail. Uh, the hairs out towards the end are really long and probably better for like little streamers or whatnot. I like to use starting around uh, about three or four inches from the base and, and then all this hair in between is great for posting up uh, uh, parachutes. So what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and start uh, the post on here and, and get you squared away on how to do it. Calf tail is by far my least favorite material to tie with. I don't like it. It's super slippery to tie with and it has a tendency to want to come undone from the uh, wherever you're tying it in so I, I reach for this last unless I'm tying uh, like a real traditional style pattern like a royal wolf or, or some uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, done or spinner patterns that I use up in Michigan uh, look a lot better when I tie them with uh, calf tail. So it's basically up to the tire. But what I'll do is uh, reach in and grab just a small clump. You'll, I'll show you the clump here in a second. And just cut it out at the base. So basically have a clump that's about, I don't know, an eighth of a pencil diameter kind of bunches up there and it's hard to see but and I'll just pull all the under fur out 
the short ones. And you're left with uh, some nice tapered hairs. But I'm going to pull some more of that out because I don't like that. And then I'll pull some out of the top. So that's my post. Now, what I do, i got to turn this around. So the tapered end is actually pointed down. i got to actually put a hook in the vise, too. Completely forgot about that. Doing this. While you're setting that, Jim, let me jump in real quick. For those of you who are watching live on YouTube, if you want to join us in chat, right now there's nobody, um, with questions or whatever, you can go to stopandgoradio.com forward slash hangout.html. And there's a little Java chat there. You can just enter your name and come on in. All right, back on the fly. I'll go. I used a pair of hair scissors to cut that hair, but I don't like to do that when I'm tying. I'm so now when you're doing these posts, Jim, you don't need to stack them? No. I mean, it's it, it has a tendency to want to flare a little bit. I'm just basically just starting a nice little thread bed. The nice part about calf tail is that when you start it, you get the makings of a great fly body because it, it tapers so well down to the back of the fly. I'm just kind of boxing off the back end of that thing so I got something something to grab onto. So I'm taking that uh, post right there and I'm laying it over toward on my side of the hook and basically doing what's called a pinch wrap. You go up, you grab it between your finger and your thumb, you pull down on the other side and you gently pull that down. You can see it sort of tighten up against the hook. And at which point we are about three or four wraps in, I'm on. So what you do then is, and I'm going back to pair of scissors because I don't want this, this type of material is really hard on good scissors. I'm reaching in from the back. You want to cut a tapered body right there. So what will happen is, and I use 8 out thread because uh, 8 out thread is very forgiving uh, to new fly tires. What happens a lot is uh, fly tires have a, a problem with thread control and learning how to uh, use the right amount on a particular pattern. So what will happen is they'll end up with this giant clump, sort of like what I'm doing here, uh, this giant clump of thread, and uh, it doesn't afford you uh, the luxury of doing exactly what you want to do with the fly. I mean, it basically uh, it allows you a lot more room to screw up if you're going to make any mistakes. And then once you learn how to control the materials, you can start using heavier threads and accomplish the same thing with fewer wraps. So that's how it works. So the next step with this is to grab the post. And this is a little tough to see, but what's going to happen is I'm pulling it back and I'm going to start wrapping right around the front of this and make a thread dam. And that's a dam that will basically hold this post up in the air like, like so. It's hard to show. So I'm just going to start doing it. And And it's a little, it's even harder to do with a dot thread, so because you got to do a bunch more wraps, and then you get some loose, loose hairs in there. But what will happen eventually is you'll end up uh, covering all that, that fuzzy part around the front of the hook and the back of the hook with uh, dubbing anyway. So the next part's the fun part. You want to post this up, and I learned this posting technique from uh, Dennis Potter, and in one of his videos that he does, uh, one, one of his river god whatever things, emergers or, or dry flies or whatever he does, but he does this posting technique, and I'll show you how, what the other thing that he does when he uh, posts up uh, the Zelon and the other the, the Metz Bright type stuff, the artificial materials uh, that make it a lot easier to post that stuff up because uh, I, when I first started, I was trying to do the same thing with that material that I did with this. You can only really do uh, post up calf tail with this type of, of technique. It just doesn't work any other way. So anyway, let's uh, get to the actual posting part. So what happens is I'll pull my thread up 
and then I'll just reach around and just try to capture or just gently and what's, what's happening though is you gotta make sure your tension is good on your uh, on your bobbin because what will happen is you'll end up pulling too hard or too soft and that thread will just come right off of there and what can happen is you can adjust the angle of the post as you're going you can do that a little bit later too you have to see what I did there I'm just, yeah, just yeah. wrap, just wrap wow. the thing up so that's that's what can happen this stuff is incredibly slippery that's why I don't like tying with it make sure I got enough thread out and what can happen what you can do though is do a crisscross right. and that anchors the thread again so you can get uh, another go, uh, kind of go around on the post. The reason that we're posting is that this gives a place for you to tie the hackle feather into. And I'll show you how that works once this is uh, posted up. I'm just about done with this. I want to go up, I'm, it's right around a sixteenth of an inch or so, but you can see I'm putting some tension on that and it is still, I mean it's pretty rigid now. I'm just Very tight, yeah. Foot. And I haven't even put any uh, Cement on it, and that's the next thing. Is you want to take a little, uh, it's a little Sally Hansen's hard as nails. I use a bodkin, but I don't just I don't use the brush because it just puts way too much material on. And just use a bodkin. And just cover that. Just put a little bit on there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you post up. A parachute post. Now, when it's drying, what you can do is adjust the angle so it's nice and perpendicular. Then, when you get to where you're ready to tie in your hackle, I got some. Uh, let me see here. I had a few hackles laid out. This is the biggest one. What happens is you end up with. Here's a piece of grizzly hackle that I got. It's just I basically took the hackle and, and splayed. You just run your finger down it, and it'll splay all the, the little barbules. And there is a shiny side and a dull side. That's the dull side, although you might not be able to tell it on the video. And it also happens to curve up. So what I'll do is just cut that back a little bit. And pull the fibers back so you've got something to, to just basically what I'm doing is trying to create a little nub that I can tie in. So I created a little nub. And what that does, it gives you a place to start. So you can just reach around. Leave your thread down, and then you can roll a parachute on here. About, I want to say, six or so wraps, depending on the fly you're tying. Then you come back down. Capture that stem, and what I do is just wet your fingers reach in there and pull all those hackles back and just capture that, just put about three wraps on that stem. That way you can reach in, cut the stem, kind of frizz those back a little bit and there you go, there's a parachute. That's obviously with no tail or uh, or Anything else? I'm looking for my half inch tool. There it is. What you can do then is just reach in, two half inch on it. It's a little sloppy because I'm trying to deal with this camera here at the same time. <laughs> there it is. It's a fishing fly, I would say. The post is a little big, so I, I would, you know, and, and quite honestly, it's just a matter of it's a matter of cosmetics. Uh, the, the fish don't care because basically, when
when that flies in the water, that's all they see. If you want to switch on to the camera, Rick, that's all the, the fish see is the bottom of the fly and some hackle. And if they come at it from an angle, they might see a little bit of that wing uh, coming at it. But beyond that, they're not going to see much. So if that post is getting in your way, you can basically just lop it off. Man. Lop it off. Get ready to rock and roll. That is calftail. I'm going to take a little drink here so I can keep talking. The next material that we're going to use is uh, turkey flats. Put the turkey flats in here. You'll see that these flies look a lot alike. They just uh, the materials are just a little. A little different. So I'll have to focus on that so it's popping real good. You can see this is a turkey flat feather. And what happens is uh, the turkey flat, I'll put, I got a pink one and a white one here, I'll show you. They are basically turkey body feathers that uh, have kind of a flat edge on them. And the, this, this feather is occurs mostly on the front and the sides of, a, of an actual turkey breast. You'll see them, kind of a blocky looking feather. And when you see them, they're basically, uh, they're pretty gnarly looking. Just, you know, the farther up the stem, we only want just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's the only part that we can actually use. So what I do is you cut out a V out of here because you don't want to try to tie in these short fibers. And these webby fibers at the, the the bottom of the stem there are basically unusable as well. So start to clean it, and it's pretty easy. It's just reach it in there, strip it, strip it. So that's how you clean that part of the feather off. And then you cut the V out by just sticking your scissors, just close them as kind of just about that much, right? And then you just stick it into that stem about where you want it to cut, and then you got your V. That's a prep feather right there. So what we want is a straight version of this uh, flat right here, the stem. We want these barbules right here. Basically, I'll lower that a little bit so you can see it. So what I'll do is grab it, and then see if I can do this in front of the camera. Cut it right up to the V. And these barbules have little hooks and loops in them like Velcro, and they stick together. So they basically are pretty easy to work with. So what I'll do is I'll take that uh, piece of the flat right there, and this is really hard to do in front of the camera and still <laughs> yeah. what I'm doing. But what I'm going to try to do is roll this over. It's a rolled, uh, rolled flat hackle. So I'm going to roll it over once. It's still going to be a little messy. And then I just drop it in. So I'll reach in there and grab it. So basically what you want to end up with is about an eighth of an inch worth of rolled up turkey flat. And I will take the fly out, put one in, We'll set that off to the side. You may hear my son tapping off in the distance. I actually just went and closed the door to my office. Sending Morse code out. And my wife's in there watching TV. <laughs> cheering, cheering Dexter along. Oh, uh, some nature show. <laughs> <laughs> cheering some bonobo along. <laughs> Okay, so when you're ready to tie it in, basically the procedure is about the same. You take that rolled post, do a pinch wrap, and I'll do that again so you can see it. Just go up slow, pinch it, pull it back down the other side, and then capture it. 
And that post, and I should say all these posts, that's a little short. A little bit longer there. I'm tying these posts in about two thirds of the way up from the back of the hook shank. It's about a third of the length down from the eye. That gives you a pretty good proportion and it locates that parachute in a good position to float the fly well. Then I'm tying the thread dam just like I did on the previous fly. And that posted. That looked pretty good. So I'll reach in and cut. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't. No. <laughs> okay, so that's the back of the feather. Probably should have done that before I started. Doing the thread dam, but that's neither here nor there. That's a pretty. What happens is that turkey flat leaves a real small pile of feathers back there, so you can you can build up a thread body uh, pretty easily back there in the back of the fly. So we'll get it right up underneath of there, and we'll start tying the post again. Same idea. Just post it up. The hardest part for me at least in my experience, is uh, the thread control on this posting part of it. Because what you want to do is you want to get this flat, this turkey has a, a profile. If I, when I show it to you, you'll see it's almost flat when you look wow, down man. at it. But it doesn't round out like calf tail does, which I like, and it's also a lot lighter. I think it's less buoyant. It tends to get waterlogged. When you're fishing it, but I, I kind of like these for little little tiny dry flies. This is I'm tying this on a size 12 hook, just so you can see the process. But I mean, it's basically translates very well down to smaller sized. Once you just go up and down, up basically up and about a sixteenth of an inch, and then work your way back down. And that's it. That's the post. And then you put a little, for crying out loud, put the Sally Hansons on it before it <laughs> explodes on you. Because otherwise, you end up having to go through that whole process all over again. And it works really well. How are we on time? Oh, plenty of time. We're at 24. Okay, that's good. So and I'm, I'm even, uh, I have a tendency to just throw a half hitch in right there. And Which makes sense, too, because if your bobbin control isn't that good, it could stop it from getting away from you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it could, bad things can happen if you aren't really on top of your thread control. So let me just snip that out because I'm OCD. <laughs> and I'll I'll use a smaller hackle and, and tie a parachute on here. We'll just use the back end this time because it's a heck of a lot easier to tie from the back of the fibers than it is from the front. As you can see, I had, if you look at it, this flat, this uh, hackle has a that's the that's towards the tip, and this is towards the base. This is much easier to tie in from the base. I just used that other the the front of the other hackle because it wasn't uh, wasn't very tapered. Three, four, five, six. Seven. This is when materials handling is you know, it takes some practice. You got to kind of wriggle that thread up underneath the hackles that you've tied in and I always end up pulling some down and get a couple three wraps in there. And then just lick your fingers, reach in. See I captured a bunch of fibers in there. That's okay. These are not flies I'm gonna to send to the president. 
These are fishing flies, so they are going to get used. The only ones that are going to critique them are the fish. Apparently, the only fish that you know do anything besides bite them are up in Rick's areas of woods. <laughs> they, I think they come at them with a jeweler's loop to see exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what's the uh, let's see where's my uh, yeah they come up like. Let's see the quality on that. <laughs> I don't think you had 500 yeah, on that fly. I'm not going to bite that. <laughs> it comes some kind of crazy. <laughs> so, let's throw my half inches on. Now let's put two on it. Just hold it in place. And that is a folded turkey flat post. So you'd end up dressing this anyway with a little uh, dressing, well, but that's yeah. basically, I mean, when it's in the water, that's what you see. That's and give us the top shot? Unless you're drowning, that's what you see. Wow, that is really thin. Yep. It's just the profile that you see. Well, if you look at mayfly wings, when they're up, uh, mm -hmm. when they're on the water, they, that, yeah. those wings both, they kind of come up and match together, depending on the fly. Some of them are or, you know, they kind of flare out or go off like that. But most of them, you know, you see this profile, which is what you kind of see here, and then, you know, feet, which is the rest of it. And then the tail coming off. The tail, I mean, some flies have really distinctive tails when you're looking at them in your hand anyway. I'm, I'm not entirely sure what they're looking like in the water. But that is a roll turkey flat. So... Rick gets all my cast off flies. <laughs> hey, they catch fish. Yeah. The next thing I'm going to show you is, I'm pretty sure this is Z-Line, but it's, there's a couple different brands of material, but this is uh, basically a, an artificial material. Uh, this is the clump that I'm going to use, but it comes in packages. That you have to kind of strip off a clump of it when you're working with it, and the you know the manufacturer wasn't smart enough to leave the label in, so tough noogies for him. So I actually, after looking at this uh, particular post that I tied, that's a little heavy, and I'm going to probably strip out just a small. Once again, it's the OCD in me, and I'm just stripping out. I'm stripping out like that much of the fibers, because what happens is. We're going to actually uh, uh, tie these on like you would rubber legs. I have a, one of my favorite things to do is just twist that up, and it kind of binds those fibers together. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap it over the hook and then pull both sides up in a U so that the post is sticking up, and then we'll, we'll post that up. So we'll put the hook in. Keep open the camera. I hope I'm still on. Yeah, you're fine. So this is assuming, you know, all these flies, for the most part, I would probably uh, post, I'd probably post my parachute first, uh, go to the back of the fly, tie in the tails, and then dub my way back to the, uh, the post, uh, maybe a couple of really, I mean, you're talking really small amounts of dubbing when you're, even on this a giant fly like this, but, and then I'd go to the front of the fly, because the thread should be very close to what your your head color will end up being, either black or, or dun or brown or whatever the color is. And then I basically uh, uh, tie in the hackle. At the, it, it's like the last thing I do before I finish the fly. Some people like to tie that little piece of dubbing that, that it goes in front of the post very last and then tie a really small thread head right on the tip, but, you know, Life's too short. So, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, life's too short, brother. So the next thing we're going to use is this uh, artificial uh, indicator stuff. That's my. That's going to be my brand name, artificial indicator stuff. So I'll just put a little base down, come back up to that point where I'm going to tie in this stuff because this is important that you get right underneath where you want to be 
if you take the, the piece of material that you're going to tie in and literally pull it around, sorry about that, you pull it around the uh, thread as you're coming around, and basically it flips over a little bit. So um, there's, it's lining up this way, mm -hmm. front to back. So a couple wraps just to get it started, and then you pull it. Oh, twist. Do that. Do that. The problem with this is, since you aren't building a thread dam and you haven't done the uh, initial work that you do to kind of post this up, it takes a little longer. But this, this is still one of my favorite materials to post with. You have to make your post a little longer that you're going to go with. I'm thinking, you know, for you people who are measuring three thirty seconds as opposed to like a sixteenth of an inch, <laughs> you know, if you're you're getting the mics out, yeah, you're gonna mic it. Just just add yourself a little bit more thread on there because you're basically starting your post at the bottom, right by the hook shank. So it's got to be a little bit longer. And what's gonna happen is that body. You have to have your body. You know, you've got to cut, what's going to happen is you're going to dub up to that post, and it needs to be a little beefier. To and what's going to happen is it's going to cover, and you're only going to have a sixteenth of an inch showing anyway. Right. So that's why you got to have a little bit of that going there. So I'll go ahead and that didn't take long to do that. I mean, it just I posted that right up. It didn't have any problems. I uh, kind of what happens when I'm tying a bunch of flies. I'm I'm wasting material here right now yeah. because I'll start and sh you know start it. Uh, basically, short on one end, and then pinch that up so it'll there'll be one end shorter than the other of the material sticking up. Right. So you can just as you're going, you can use all the material that you're going to use because this stuff is only about I want to say like three or four inches long. So you don't want to be doing it right in the middle every time, otherwise you'll it, it'll be impossible to tie with once you get down to the the bottom of it. Well, the the sadists that tie the size twenty flies, they'll have plenty of material to work with. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Save the scrap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Most of the flies I fish would eat size twenty flies for lunch. So this is just, this is the fun time that I do to go up to Michigan and fish with, because there aren't really any wild trout around here near Cincinnati. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. A little glue on it. I'll tell you what, you never get the funnier looks that you'll see than, than when you're in the fingernail polish aisle. At oh, yeah, been there, done that. <laughs> and you're sitting there <laughs> looking at all the, the stuff that the Kardashians are selling. Oh, yeah, some of that stuff is wild. i tell you what, it looks like it'd be great on the front of a fly. Well, I picked these up for my, I don't know if I can get it to focus here, but it's yeah. Sally Hansen's. It's a metallic green, and then there's a metal flake, deep, deep red for making bass poppers. And it was just like, it is so funny, the looks you get when you're walking through. Yeah. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I always make sure to say I'm tying flies. I'm not a cross dresser. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. No, not at all. So, once again, I'll just uh, show you how I. Well, now, uh, this is probably I probably uh, should just let this go as it is because to tie a hackle in, I'm still not taking into account the fact that there's there'd be dubbing in here too. There'd be dubbing, you know, up. Almost half the height of that post, so and there'd be a body underneath it, so and down to the tail. So I'm not going to bother, but just so you can see the the process, it's it's pretty easy. And then when you get your hackle in, basically what I do is measure. I pull this over to the length of the hackle, or a little bit less, and then reach in, clip it, and that's your post. And this post actually is a little more. It's a little circular. A little more round, yeah. What happens with these, though, is as you fish them, it just mashes down and just spreads out into this giant, you know, foobar 
because you'll look at it there, and that's what it'll look like after you fish it, you know, a couple of fish on that thing, and it'll look like that. And there is a video on YouTube. I'll have to see if I can't find it and put it up in the comments on this video, on um, this hangout here. Is There's a Brit, and he's fishing, 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 and it gets mushed, and you see him pull out a mustache comb, and he <laughs> straight out his indicator. That's just over the top. I mean, I can understand, you know, a couple false casts, dry it off, but... <laughs> <laughs> If you're grooming your flies, <laughs> okay. The last material, and we'll call it quits for the night. Is and this is the, this is the fly that I started with. It is phone. There's always, I mean, most of these you'll see. There's like a similarity in the. Uh, there's a similarity in the technique. But the materials demand that you basically do a couple of things different. Uh, the calf tail, you really have to taper that back end of that calf tail. And you have to be very careful tying it or it'll slide off. With the turkey flat, it's e it slides off even easier because it's softer. Mm -hmm. But it, I think it makes a superior post. The, uh, and the artificial stuff is so easy to tie in, it's not even funny. I mean, you get the exact location on the hook that you want every time and it's I mean it's kind of a no-brainer but I've try I've started trying uh, foam I've, they, they make these little 16th inch foam cylinders and once again I got these over at the board big box uh, out uh, near my house and these are basically closed cell foam and this I mean they just punch them out you, they're soft, they float, they add flotation, they're very nice. Uh, one of the things that you need to consider, uh, and this is basically anecdotal through my, my reading on the subject, is the use of the right collar indicator for the time of day that you fish. Uh, during the day, when it's really high contrast, you probably want a pink or, or a neon green indicator. Uh, later in the evening, you don't need that, you just need uh, to see that fly poking up, white is okay. Uh, a lot of guys will actually use black or gray or dun, and it makes for a much more visible fly on the water, even on busy water. Uh, some of the streams, uh, bits of the Osceola that I fish up in Michigan, I mean, you'll get into these riffles that are 100 yards long, and they're just, it's just this the whole time as it's going by. And it's hard to see a fly bobbing up and down this little tiny thing. The brook trout don't have any problem seeing it, but uh, I sure do. So I, you know, I end up setting the hook on whatever's jumping out of the water half the time. So it's nice to be able to see it. So uh, white is a good all-round color. Uh, I like to use that for morning flies, like trichos. Sometimes I'll use a little, just a tiniest bit of. Uh, they make uh, it's thirty-second inch. Uh, it's, they shave this stuff so fine. It's foam that you can uh, cut and then tie just this little tiny little parachute on a size 26. It's not a parachute. I'm actually tying a, a spinner wings off of it. Uh, it's just basically a thread, grocery bag, and foam. But they uh, uh, they catch fish, so you know why wouldn't I? But this last one is a foam uh, foam post indicator, and it it is one of the easier ones to tie in. So I'm a big fan of foam. I know there's guys out there that use nothing but natural materials. They probably have corn cobs in their bathrooms and <laughs> <laughs> Whew, yeah. I'm not pointing fingers, I just saying, you know <laughs> right right tool for the right job. Uh, you basically just go back like you would the uh, the first two materials, and I will go back because what happens is if you go back a little bit, you can make a really nice tapered body. I take that tube, and I literally cut the sharpest angle on it that I can. So you end up with kind of an angled tube like that. Yeah, nice baloney cut. Yeah. Baloney good. So you lay that 
on there. Another pinch wrap. What that does is that gives you the opportunity to define exactly where you want to post it. And that's pretty close. You still got to do a thread band underneath the front. What I'm seeing with these fly, this particular type of uh, this particular type of material, is that it is a lot flimsier than your the other materials when you're first starting to use it. Right. It looks like it gives up a lot easier. But you can get a nice tapered body, and that whole all that foam in there is closed cell. It doesn't accept water, so when you wrap dubbing around it, it basically turns into a little fly shaped boat. So when you wrap dubbing on that, it is going to float, buddy. And you're not wasting a yard of thread building the body up. <laughs> no, you're not. No, but you do have to be careful. You don't want to slice this stuff off. It will basically acts like a garret. I mean, you can really be uncomfortable. Kind of, this works kind of the same way that the, you know, really having a hard time here. There we go. See. Okay. This is making me angry. Let's start from the bottom and go up slow. It'll start compressing that foam. The nice part about foam is that it creates kind of this little indentation, and you can wrap your hackle right up to the top of that indentation and your your hackle gets like a little uh, little coverage and it keeps it uh, the foam kind of keeps it from popping off the top of the right. post but I have to do a lot more wraps on this to the point where I think I'm gonna go ahead and put some cement on it Ooh, maybe hold on here I'm gonna come down. Yeah, if you were using a finer thread, I could see that cutting it off. Just <laughs> yeah, it would it would just shear this right off. I got some ten off threads that I use for trichos and little little bugs, and it would definitely cut this stuff off. So I'll just you just form it to kind of where you want it. That's the other nice part about foam is it just very very forgiving. I, I would recommend this for new fly tires. If you want to experiment with the traditional materials, by all means, they're ubiquitous at fly shops. And then I'll finish. I'll go up a little bit farther, but I want the I want to cement that post a little bit. Right, get it a little stiffer. Yeah, I mean it's just it's kind of flopping around. Put a half inch in there just for. Giggles. There, because the eight odd thread will be a lot more forgiving on you know a size twenty when you're doing this. If you're brave enough to do that, I'm not a big parachute guy at size twenty. And just go up the post again. I did end up having the I got a little bit of a body, so that sixteenth of an inch probably holds true for this. And just come right back down. Can't fetch it. Get a beer. I know some guys that are production tired. Sit there and they'll just tie a bunch of these up and then go get a cocktail. Yeah. So that's the hardest part is getting it to post up. Once you get the post done, I mean, you can slap all the other materials on. It's not that hard. But that is posting uh, 
materials and four different materials and on uh, basically the same uh, same hook size, but it translates well to uh, down. I think, in my opinion, I think I'd go down to about an 18 before I just <laughs> go to a fly shop and buy them. <laughs> yeah, before you're hitting the sauce real good at the end of them. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd start getting frustrated at anything smaller than that. But that's uh, that's the basics of posting up. It's it's once you practice it enough, and I highly recommend it because this stuff cleans off of here. You can cut all that off with an exacto knife in no time at all, and just you know go back and try it again because it works really well. Uh, the materials are relatively cheap and easy to get. Uh, but I want to thank you for joining us. This has been uh, a pleasure, and I hope Rick has felt the same way. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I learned something I didn't know, especially I was really curious about the foam. So, uh, I got good used stuff. to tie in my standard poppers. Yep, and they offer it in a bunch of different colors, too, so that's the nice part about foam. Uh, it, one thing that you might want to try, I don't know if it would work at all, is uh, putting a little Sally Hansen's on that foam before you tie it in. Because mm -hmm. it might uh, just at least up until you the you know to the bend point, and right. then you know let let it be whatever, and then just start your uh, your post off of that. Yeah, because that's what took me forever. If I can get the camera to focus here, was getting the spider legs on there, and oh, you yeah. make it look so easy. <laughs> By the way, the big box had these little popper heads, oh, a yeah, hundred yeah. for forty five cents in the clearance. <laughs> I love that. So I'll grab a bunch of them. When stores don't know what they have or they just don't care. <laughs> so that's the end of our show. I want to thank you for joining us on uh, Fly Fish Ohio, Adventures in Fly Time, along with Stop and Go Radio. Come and see Stop and Go Radio. Ting. This Friday night. Get your bell. There you go. <laughs> Get a bell. We'll do a promo. And uh, stop by and uh, watch us throw tomatoes at each other. Yeah. It's fun because we're like 400 miles away, and you know it's a really tar hard toss. But uh, once again, good night. Thanks yep. a lot, everybody. Good night, folks. Thanks for coming out. See ya.